Hi everybody, this is Anne. As I was surfing the internet admiring origami projects, I saw some interesting template designs for them. I thought it might be fun to experiment and see if I could adjust them to work with clay. I'll show you five of my favorites in this video. First I found a template for a bonbon box. I started by rolling out a slab of clay between two quarter inch thick rulers. Then I ribbed and compressed both sides. This template requires folding the sides at a 90 degree angle, which would put a lot of stress along the fold. So I decided it made sense to separate the walls from the floor and attach them separately. I cut out the four walls with a needle tool, then laid them over top of the original template to keep track of what I was doing. I used my beveling tool against the short flat side and the curved side at a 45 degree angle, then replaced the piece on top of the paper template. When I had all of them cut and arranged in the proper direction, I scored the entire flat wall side and about three quarters of the curved side, then removed all the pieces from the template. I slipped the first two wall joints and attached each bevel side in the same order as I would have if the template were still together. I continued this process with the remaining joints, adding slip as I went along, then gently pushed the seams together. I rolled a coil, then used the blunt end of a paintbrush to attach it to each inside joint and smooth the coil to the clay to reinforce the seam as each connection is the most vulnerable area to cracking. I then rolled out another slab for the floor of the piece. I placed the top of the box over the slab and marked where the top edges met the floor. I then carefully took it off, scored both the top and the floor. Then I slipped one of the edges and joined the two together. I used my finger along the outer edge to begin sealing the seam. I placed coils along the inner edges and blended them in with a paintbrush to secure the seam. I used my red rib to flatten the walls and make sure I squared all the edges. When I had it just how I wanted it, I used a needle tool to cut the excess clay away flush to the walls. I removed the extra clay, then used my finger to secure and smooth the edges together. The curvature and the offsetting of the seam lines create an upward movement to the little box. When it was leather hard, I decided to accentuate that movement by carving these lines. This would be a great little box to present an engagement ring in. Next is the diamond vase. Now I didn't really see a template for this one, but I saw a cool folded vase made out of triangles and wondered if I could create something similar. I cut out an equilateral triangle with three inch sides. 
Again, I rolled out a slab like before and traced around the triangle so that I had 12 pieces. For a quicker cut, I used a pizza cutter along the edges, then let them stiffen up to leather hard. I'm not the best at math, but since I was attaching six triangles together, I guessed that I needed to bevel the edges of the triangles to 15 degrees and asked Jim to make this cool beveling tool for me. I beveled two of the sides of each triangle. To make the assembly easier, I worked with three triangles at a time and attached them with scoring and slipping, just like the first project. Note that I slipped one of the clay pieces under the elevated triangle to keep it from becoming detached while I worked on the other side. I continued to seal the edges together in the reposed position. Then I set the trio upright and sealed the outside connection. I made sure the edges were securely attached before moving on to the next set of triangles. Here I am working on the next trio. This time, I put a sponge under each elevated edge as I worked so that I could free my hands to work on the seams. Now I face each set of triangles opposite of each other. I turned one set of upside down and slid them both together, adjusting them so they fit like a puzzle. Now I scored and slipped them together using my red rib along the outer seams to seal them. On each of the top and bottom six connection points, I put a little ball of clay and worked it into the seam. I then used my paintbrush to seal the seams along the tighter inner areas. Notice that the top rim and the foot are angled, but I need them to be flat, so I gently tap them on the table to flatten the clay for the next stage of construction. With the other six triangles, I repeated those steps to create another layer of six attached triangles. To make the vase, I stacked the two together, making sure the center seams fit together perfectly. I scored both edges and then slipped the rim of one of the layers. I then lined up the seam connections. Once I had them in place, I began sealing them first from the outside and then from the inside by working coils into the seams. Note that I used the blunt side of the paintbrush to place the coil and then smooth it down. The least amount of fingerprints on the clay, the better. I 
I then rolled out another slab for the bottom side. I traced, scored, and slipped them together just like I did when I made the bonbon box, making sure to secure the top and the floor with clay coils in the seams. When I had the two attached, I cut the bottom off flush with the walls and then removed the excess clay. I then worked the outer edges smooth with my finger, so it looked like this. I love the accordion folds that give the illusion that the piece is contracting and expanding as you view it from all sides. And when it was leather hard, I carved into the sides so that it enhanced this movement of the lines. The third project is a conch shell vase. As an origami paper project, this template is supposed to create a round sphere shape, but I took it in a little different direction. Like the bonbon box, I cut the template into four parts along the fold lines and cut them out of a slab. I used the 45 degree angle side of the bevel tool to bevel all three sides of each piece. I then used the original template as a guide on how to lay out the template parts as they'll be joined together. I scored all the edges, then slipped the first connection point and attached that to its adjoining piece. I rolled a coil and pushed that into the inner part of the seam. While holding that with one hand, I slipped and connected the second side, again pushing a coil into that seam. It's very important to work the seam until it's securely attached before you move on. The first template part automatically folded over to guide me to the next connection point. I slipped and scored the two curved edges together. Again, I rolled a coil and pushed it into the seam. Finally, I slipped and connected the last two edges like the others, using coils for as much of the last two seams as I could until the form completely closed up. I pinched the outside edges together firmly, but not aggressively. I didn't want to thin out the clay too much and encourage cracking. Now that air was trapped in the form, I was free to rib the outside edges together and square the sides. As I've been ribbing the sides inward, I thought it'd be fun to see if I could blow the walls back out. So I poked a hole in it and blew it up a bit, then sealed the hole back up. I thought this might be a nice triple bud vase. 
So I used my hole punches to first make cuts from the top side edge like this. Then I finished them by cutting the holes downward, like that. Jim and I thought this form looked like a conch shell, so we decided to enhance that beachy vibe. I had a rubber commercial mold with a nautilus shell on it and decided to make it into a sprig. I brushed cornstarch over the rubber, then pressed a thin clay slab over that and remove the slab to reveal the imprint. I cut away the excess clay, scored the sprig, and slipped it into place on the long side of the conch form. Notice that the bottom of the piece is round. So it doesn't rock back and forth, I simply pushed it down onto a flat surface to create flat spots along the bottom. The lines of this form flow into each other, creating a visually dramatic piece on any side you approach it. And the flowers make it look even better. The fourth project is the pinwheel candle holder. Jim and I both had our doubts about this one, but I couldn't resist trying it. Instead of cutting this template apart, I'm going to try and keep both the walls and the floor together. Also for this project, I rolled a thinner slab, less than a quarter inch thick. Then I cut out the template. First, to keep the edges from ripping while folding, I used my wet finger to compress and round the edges. Then I sandwiched the piece, flipped it over, and did the same thing to the underside. Before attempting to fold the actual clay, I practiced the fold with the paper template to avoid as much touching and fiddling with the clay as possible. I found that it was important to know where the square floor was, so I put the template back down on the clay and traced it out. The scoring along the bottom made it easier to manipulate. The order in which you fold this makes a difference. The circular cutouts on each wall will always be on the opposite edge as you work around the piece. I carefully folded the first edge completely over the top of the floor. I picked up the second wall tucked the small edge under the top point and aligned the pointed edge of the flap so it staggered over the top. I picked up the third edge, again tucking the smaller point under and aligning the bigger flap into place. Finally, I folded the fourth edge like the other three, tucking the smaller edge under the previous wall and aligning the flap around the center point. I adjusted the flap so that all the edges were aligned into a circle along the top. When I was happy with the arrangement of the top circle, I pressed the edges downward to begin securing them together. I used my finger on the inside to secure the edges and the bottom flaps as best I could. I didn't turn it over at this point, but waited until it was leather hard to work the bottom. Here's the piece I made the day before that's leather hard. To finish it off, I added coils on the back side where the top edges meet the side walls, then compressed along the clay folds to avoid any cracking. The petal-shaped flaps give the form movement as the lines flow around the center point into each other. The last project is the trifold plate. Again, I rolled out a quarter inch slab and traced and cut the template out. To make the slits in the sides, I simply pressed the template edge into the clay so I could see it when I picked up the template. I then used a ruler and made those cuts. With a wet finger, I rounded the top edges of the slab. I then sandwiched the piece between two mats and flipped the plate over, carefully peeling the top mat from the clay without stretching it. I again compress the edges along the sides with my wet finger. I'll be folding the edges over each other and don't want to stretch it, so I place dry sponges under each of the sides to support the edges as I fold. I measured how far each edge overlapped the bottom edge to keep it even. I 
I scored and slipped the edges together, gently pressing them together with my fingers and sealing them with a paintbrush, both on the top and the bottom. When they were securely connected, I wanted to make a flat round floor for this plate. I transferred the plate to the top of a thick piece of foam. I again supported the edges of the plate with the sponges. I found that one of my commercial glaze bottles fit the center of the piece perfectly, so I used it to push a floor into the center of the plate. I took it off the foam and let it dry to leather hard before turning it over and rounding the slitted edges on the other side. Now here's a plate that I made the day before. I'd love to hear how you'd finish this piece. Would you carve any lines or add texture to it? How would you glaze it? Please leave me a comment, let me know. I hope you'll give these projects a try so you'll feel confident to experiment with other origami templates. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.